Good morning. All right, continuing with assignment two, which we're going to try to turn in today. It's, it's due by 11.59 tonight. We are going to always, when we come back on a Monday, check our course outline, kind of see where we are in the semester. We're starting the fifth week of 16 weeks. So today, you'll see in red, assignment two is due. And our presentation critique for assignment two will happen in class in about an hour and a half. You can see the presentation critique question up on the board. Also, question of the day two, you need to post your response by 11.59 tonight about copyright protections, right, which we discussed last class. And then we're going to introduce our first proving ground. Our proving ground is a quick turnover project. It's worth one and a half points, and it's the first of four that you will do to earn your creative problem solving badge, right? And our proving ground is going to be placing our collage creature into our fantasy landscape and then posting some information about it, you know, to make sure you understand proper use of resolution and proper use of adapting the lighting and the angle direction and things we're going to be learning. So today we're learning some new skills. We're going to be learning more about dodging and burning, which are ways to adjust the lighting with tools rather than through direct adjustments. And we'll also play with a tool called Clone Stamp to kind of clean everything up. So if we're working on assignment two, the requirements are your vision sketch and your finished creature head to toe saved as a PNG with no background. So we also want to have kind of clean edges around it so we can put it right into our background without a lot of distraction. So I'm going to go ahead and open up that assignment to shortcut to it, remember you can go right under unit modules to assignments since we've already gone through unit five. And we're going to go right to where we post assignment two. If you want professional examples, remember you have those resources there. We have our steps and then most of us have posted our vision sketch already, which is great. It's a good way to acknowledge the deadline. And I'm going to have to scroll all the way to the bottom to see where we were, right? So this was my inspiration. This was my vision sketch, thinking about what kind of composites I could use to create this creature. And this is where we were by the end of last class. All the parts were rough cut and placed, but there's still a lot to do to make it believable, right? Very similar to where we were after one day of doing our composite landscape. So I'm going to open up my folder, I have assignment two folder in there. And I try to organize everything for assignment two right there. I look for my PSD file for my beat gerbil. And I just double click it to open it up in Photoshop. It's good to always check if you are signed into Adobe. So you can click on help and it will show you which account is signed in. It should be an email address that you recognize and then you're good to go. If ever you are trying to catch up or you want to review while you're outside of the lab, we go to our NLC Arts Lab YouTube page and you can just search NLC Arts Lab or you can go to the home page of our class and go to links. These are all our external resources and then click on the YouTube link there. Now, the difference between just searching it is you will always get to the home page and the home page gives you individual videos at the top and then we'll give you playlists. It's meant to be navigated through the playlist, right? Each project is organized into a playlist. We are the Adobe section. So you can see what we've done so far. And we started by sketching for our character design. Then we learned a little bit more about how to improve our sketching through skeletal templates. And then we started finding high resolution reference materials for the different parts of our creature. Uh, I definitely recommend Pixabay for that. I'm just looking at the title. It seems like it has a character limit. <laughs> and, then, and then we rough cut and placed those components into Photoshop at the right resolution. So what do I mean by right resolution? Well, you want to immediately check before you continue work on your Photoshop file by checking image, image size, 
to make sure that this is a printable quality. So mine is 30 by 40 inches by 350 pixels per inch. 30 by 40 is the largest size you can print on professional printers on, on a professional four color offset lithography printers. And 350 is 50 points higher, 50 pixels per inch higher than standard minimum print resolution. So I am fine there, but now is a good time to crop down, use my guides here, around my creature because I don't need all that extra memory usage messing with my Photoshop's performance. I also don't need any other programs open that I'm not using. So if I have Spotify open, I'm going to quit it. I have a second version of Photoshop open. I'm going to quit that. Well, I'm actually in that right now. Wouldn't I? My other version of Photoshop, I'm going to quit that so that I'm using all of my, my RAM, my processing memory uh, in this program. And then the only other thing I have open is my web browser for Canvas. Then I'm going to use the crop tool. I'm going to go to my guides just outside of my creature. It's okay if you cut into your sketch a little bit because we've already posted that. And now I can erase layers I don't need. So if there's anything I'm not using, I can delete those. And now I have my layers organized. So remember, Command-0 will fit everything on screen. Now I can see everything a lot clearer. I have a bunch of resources layered into the head, all organized here in this folder. And I have a lot of resources for the body organized here. I'm going to go ahead and take this background, say Edit, Fill, fill the whole thing up with middle gray. So I can see my edges really clearly. And then I'm going to hit Command semicolon to hide any existing guides. OK, so where can I start blending? It's very similar to what we did with our landscape. We have to start with direct adjustments for color correcting. So I'm going to start with the head in this folder. Right? I can even just turn off the body if it's a distraction. And I'm going to start, instead of from the, the back forward, like I've started to do, I'm going to start from the top down. Now the first thing is I like this eye. So I'm going to leave that eye just as bold as it is. But then I'm going to go to the layer behind it and I'm going to play with image adjustments to bring some warmth into this gecko reference so that that eye can blend a little bit more naturally at its edge. So. Make sure you are selecting on the layer you want to affect and then go to image adjustments and we start with levels, the lights and darks. I'm going to push the mid-tone slider, decide whether it needs to be darker or brighter. Make it just a touch brighter right there. Then I go to image adjustments, color balance. This is my favorite one. This is the temperature of the light. Even though it's a green lizard, right? It's we want it to feel lit by the same temperature of light as everything else. So I'm going to push the midtones. I always start with the midtones more towards red. Maybe a little bit towards magenta, but not too much. The highlights, I might push a little bit towards yellow and towards red. And then the shadows, I'm going to push a little bit towards the cyan. So you still, it still has that green color, but now it's that green color that kind of matches the lighting condition a little bit better. Lastly, I can go to image adjustment, hue saturation. Those are the three we need to know in the order. Levels, color balance, hue saturation. And then I'm going to play with the hue slider and just shift it a little bit to the left and right and see if I want to change its spectrum. I want to change the spectrum a little bit to the left for mine. And then I can play with the intensity of the color. I'm just going to take the intensity of the colors down a little bit with saturation. All right, now I'm ready to blend this eye into this gecko behind. And I have lots of overlap around the eye. I have this beautiful little shiny highlight because this is from a goldfish. It's nice and sharp and in focus. So all I'm going to do is use my tablet. And tablets are open at the back. Remember to put something in, in the drawer for them. You guys have been doing a good job. 
Then I'm going to use my eraser, and I'm going to set my eraser to be opacity 100%, and my brush size to be fairly small, and then my hardness to be zero. So this is the, the organic blending. Works really well with animal textures. Oops. But I got to be on the right layer. So I want to subtract the top layer and erase it away from the layer behind it. And so that 0% hardness gives me a blending edge. And the 100% opacity means that they'll, I'll completely obliterate that hard edge. And that's my first job. Completely get rid of that hard edge where my lasso selected it. Then once I've done that, I can go to a lesser opacity and start transitioning the two together. The scales of the gecko with the bright hard edge contrast of the goldfish eye. So now it really looks like it's integrated into that surface. That's two layers. Now I do it with the next layer down. So I'm going to go to the beak that's underneath the eye. And if you're zoomed in like this, which you will be for cleaning up edges on your creature, you can always just hit the space bar to get the hand tool and move around while you're zoomed in. So what I can do immediately is on the gecko layer, I can use that same eraser to get rid of that hard edge, but I don't want to be at 45% opacity, I want to be at 100% opacity. And then I'll fix the color on the, the beak underneath. There are some places I might want, want hard edges though, like the, the ridge of the nose. But when I'm blending organic texture into organic texture, most of the time, I just want to get rid of that hard edge completely. And then blend from there. Especially because my gecko eye has a lot of depth of field focus pull issues. So that's going to have to get blended with what's behind it. All right, so now I'm going to go to the beak layer. It's my third one down. And I'm going to play with its image adjustments. So first levels, mid-tone slider. Do I brighten or darken? I'm going to brighten because that beak is going to catch as much light as that eye. Next, color balance. Get the temperature of the light. Start with mid-tones. You can always push your sliders back and forth, see which one seems to help. It seems like adding yellow to the mid-tones, a little cyan is helpful. Highlights, let's try some red. Get that intensity to match the eye. And then in my shadows, do the opposite of the highlights. More blues, more cyans. All right, next, saturation. I am going to take the saturation or the hue, slide it a little bit on each side. I'm actually going to end up moving it a little bit to the right to warm it up. And then maybe intensify it just a bit. Remember, the, the eye is the focal point of the head, and the head is the focal point of the creature. So if you're going to have bright colors anywhere, this is a place that makes sense. And now I can start blending in the gecko with my eraser with these textures of the beak underneath that are overlapping it. And a way to do that is once I get rid of those hard edges, which I've done, now I can move to a lower opacity. Now, what's so great about using a soft-edged eraser at a low opacity to blend organic textures 
is that it will show a little bit of each layer. So this 